Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss the basic principles of immunocytochemistry. So immunocytochemistry, or ICC, is a powerful method to visualize the localization of a protein of interest. And as the name suggests, the technique involves immunology, by the use of antibodies, cytology, which is a study of cells, and chemistry, which is referring to the chemical reactions needed to visualize the protein. ICC is closely related to immunohistochemistry, but here the term histo refers to histology, in which we study tissues. Therefore, in immunohistochemistry, we visualize proteins in tissue samples instead of looking at individual cells. This with the purpose to investigate which cells of your tissue sample contain your protein of interest. So in this video we will focus on immunocytochemistry, although the basic principles behind the two techniques are similar. So here is an example of a protein that we want to visualize, and we might also refer to this protein as the antigen, as it is the target of an antibody. Antibodies are proteins produced by the immune system of animals and they're designed to recognize and bind to specific protein sequences. The antibody that recognizes the protein of interest was what we call the primary antibody. And the part of the protein that's detected by the antibody we call the epitope. Next, a different antibody, the secondary antibody, is designed to recognize and bind to the primary antibody. Furthermore, the secondary antibody is modified in such a way that we can visualize it. So in practice, this means that it's conjugated to a fluorescent dye molecule or a fluorescent protein, for example. As the fluorescence that we observe comes from the secondary antibody, which is only bound to our protein of interest via the primary antibody, we call this indirect detection. Indirect detection of a target protein can also be achieved by the conjugation of an enzyme to a secondary antibody. The enzymatic conversion of a substrate then can lead to tissue or cell coloring. We also refer to this method as indirect colorimetric detection. As a third option, we can also tag the primary antibody with a fluorescent molecule leading to direct detection of the antigen. This method is, however, less sensitive and also often more expensive than indirect detection methods. And it's therefore that indirect detection methods are often preferred over direct detection methods in both ICC and IHC stainings. So how do we obtain our antibodies against our protein of interest? Well, we take a small part of our protein, usually around 10 to 20 amino acids long, and we inject this into an animal, in this case a rabbit. Now the immune system of the rabbit will recognize this piece of the protein as non-self, and the immune system will automatically start to produce antibodies against this part of the protein that we injected. We can then isolate the antibodies from the blood serum of the rabbit and we have our primary antibody. Now, to create secondary antibodies recognizing our primary antibodies, we take part of the FC region of the primary antibody and inject this into another animal, a goat for example. The immune system of the goat is now going to produce antibodies against this FC region of our primary antibody. Now, as we did before with the rabbit, we can isolate the antibodies from the blood serum of the goat and we have our secondary antibody. The secondary antibody is then taken to a lab and conjugated to a fluorescent molecule. So here we are, we have the tools to detect our protein of interest. The cool thing about this indirect detection method is that we can reuse our secondary antibody and we do not have to design them over and over and over again for each experiment. And this has to do with the high level of conservation in the FC region of antibodies. So when we inject another protein in another rabbit, 
this rabbit is again going to produce antibodies against a protein of interest. And while it specifically targets our new protein, the FC region remains the same. And therefore we can reuse the secondary antibody of our previous experiment, but now detect and localize our new protein. So now we have our antibodies ready and we can discuss the basic steps of the protocol. This is not the full protocol, there are some uh, additional steps in between, but these are the basics that are being taken and it will make you understand the method. So we start off with cultured cells, in a, for example in a plate like this. The first thing we do is fixate the cells. And with fixation we terminate all biological processes within the cell by creating covalent bonds between proteins. Something we call cross-linking. So we basically take a snapshot of the cells and in the same time we preserve them. Next we permeabilize the cells by adding a detergent. This will make the membranes more permeable and things from the outside more easy to enter the cells. Something we need to get our antibodies inside the cell. After permeabilization we can add our primary antibody. The primary antibody will get inside the cell and will bind to our protein of interest. Next we add our secondary antibody. Also the secondary antibody will enter the cell and will bind the primary antibody. Finally it's time to get our treated cells from the plate and mount them to a microscope slide and make them ready for imaging. We often add some anti-fading mounting media to the slide to preserve the fluorescent molecules of our sample and we can keep it for longer time. And finally, happy as you are, we can go to the fluorescent microscope and observe the localization of our protein. So here I took some beautiful pictures from a website that sells uh, secondary antibodies. So what we see in the bigger picture on the left is a secondary antibody conjugated to a green fluorescent label. And as it happens more often in fluorescent microscopy, it is accompanied by other dyes that help you to navigate through the cell. In this case, the cell's nucleus is marked in blue and the actin filaments in red. We can nicely see that the protein of interest here is located in structures surrounding the nucleus but it's not going inside. So with this I hope I gave you enough information to understand the basic principles of immunocytochemistry. And there's a lot more detailed information available on the production of antibodies, the conjugation to fluor force uh, and detailed protocols of ICC procedure. You can find it on both YouTube and Google so check out these sites if you want to know more about them. Alright, cheers.